Hello everyone and welcome to our presentation on digitalizing graphics for teaching and learning. My name is Tamsin Cavallero and I'm presenting here with my colleague who is the hero of instructional design as far as I'm concerned, um, Jennifer Gilligan. So if we just go on to the next slide please. Um, we're going to be talking to you about a graphic facilitation um, digital badge module that we've developed. So just to give you an overview of what graphic facilitation is, it uses a variety of visual approaches to capture big ideas, map processes, engage audiences and present information clearly. It allows you to visualize problems and come up with solutions. Um, approaches vary, but all combine words and pictures, and graphic facilitation helps to engage students and encourage retention by building confidence, encouraging and widening participation, fostering a sense of belonging, creating a space for reflection on the student journey and the learning process, improving concentration and listening skills, making note-taking more enjoyable, and providing flexible pathways into education for non-traditional learners. Graphic facilitation methods are also used by agile and scrum coaches, change initiators, software engineers, healthcare planners, and community organizations. Um, next slide, please, Jennifer. So funded by the INO project, Jennifer, who's an instructional designer, and myself, I'm a lecturer in social care and social practice, um, work together to design and implement an online graphic facilitation digital bad badge module that was designed for academic support and professional staff at IT Sligo. The graphic facilitation digital badge module was developed to benefit lecturers and um, professional support staff in using principles of universal design for learning within their teaching methodologies through the principle of representation uh, in order to support IT Sligo students. So the focus was both on campus and on online students as well. However, due to the current restrictions, the module was delivered in a fully online format. Um, the purpose of the module was to provide participants with a set of practical tools that staff could use to digitally enhance and customize their own specific work practices, such as customizing slides, Moodle pages and tiles, research mapping, conference planning, setting visual agendas and offering student support. And graphic facilitation can be used online and on campus environments. And so activities for both environments were introduced and these were explored on the online module. So the initial course was offered over a 10 week period to 16 members of staff. And this was 12 teaching staff and three professional support staff and then one member of staff from the Insurance Institute of Ireland. 12 of the participants were women and four were men. Um, and lecture participants were from business, engineering and design, nutrition, life sciences, marketing, tourism and sport, computing, science and social sciences. So the professional support staff included instructional designers, online student advisor, e-learning and educational development specialist and a clerical officer. And the motivations for doing the course were focused on engaging and supporting students. The length of time that participants have been in employment in IT Sligo ranged from four years to 28 years, and all participants were full-time members of staff. Just to give you an idea of their um, kind of online expertise, some participants were very experienced and others had only just started using Moodle the semester prior to this. Um, so during the time period of delivery of the module, all the teaching was 100% online. And the levels that they were used to teaching at range from level six to level nine, and the class sizes range from um, 15 to 120. So it's a huge variety. And um, just to give an idea of some of the modules they taught. So they taught things like ethics, creative practice, strategic management, insurance, maintenance and safety, communications, um, applied drama practice, social justice, environmental legislation, nutrition, biology, anatomy and physiology, disability, sport inclusion, health and fitness, nutrition and performance, weights instruction, personal training practice, research supervision, personal development, chemistry, forensics, analytical science, programming, electronic and autonomous vehicles, structural engineering and design, um, accounting and finance, so a huge range. And the weekly sessions were recorded and then uploaded to Moodle, the Moodle page so that participants could continue to practice with the videos after class. 
The Moodle page also provided participants with an idea of how to reformat their own content to make it as student centered as possible, aligning with the UDL principles of representation. So for me, working close, uh, working with Jennifer, we created a 10 week module that included weekly live online drawing sessions and a dedicated Moodle page that housed all the practical supports and resources for participants. Um, and again, for me, working closely with Jennifer allowed us to um, create a reflexive space that enabled us to create a very facilitating learning environment. So each week participants were provided with a nativity to prepare them for the class. They were then introduced to a new skill, which was demonstrated in class, and then we practiced together. The classes were delivered on a Tuesday evening, and then every Thursday we would have a two-hour meeting where we reflected on the activities and made adjustments necessary for the next week. This method allowed for flexible and responsive approaches to the module, and it took into account the diverse needs of the participants and the range of abilities. We consciously built in time and opportunity to re reflect from our different perspectives. And um, we firmly believe that allowed us to capture those alchemical teaching moments that occur and to respond uh, appropriately. And one of the reasons we think this happened is because uh, it was carefully balanced with having built in a structure beforehand, which has allowed us this freedom to experiment with creative approaches. Um, we believe that a lot of this came from the fact that we made time to forge the lecturer instructional designer relationship. And this allowed us to combine structured pedagogical approaches and to learn from each other and draw on our strengths. Making remote participants feel included and engaged would be challenging without preparation and a sound framework. So we had to consider how we could design a module that would run equally as successful if we were to return to the classroom as it would if we remained teaching it online. The decision was made to design the entire course around activities combined with a related and intertwined live class. Etivities designed devised by Jilly Salmon focuses on the students and they are based on the idea that knowledge is constructed by learners through and with others. The etivities had four core functions, draw out prior knowledge, allow an application of new knowledge, prepare the participants for the live class and then to allow those participants to showcase their knowledge with the rest of the group. By following this framework, we created the first four activities in advance and then devised the rest on a weekly basis upon observation and learned behaviours. This meant that we followed an agile approach, ready to drop or change an activity immediately. The assessment strategy was simple, the creation of an e-portfolio through Microsoft Sway. The e-portfolio was gradually built by the participants through these activities and frequent check-ins and verbal feedback encouraged participants to work weekly on building their collection of graphics. This method also meant that all hand-drawn graphics were now digitalized in one place. Building a graphics e-portfolio is truly an authentic assessment. The participants acted as graphic professionals building their their collections for further use while developing meaningful and applicable uh, digital skills. We could immediately see the positive results from linking asynchronous and synchronous activities together. The linkage between the two was important as there was a distinct advantage to carrying out the activity. A method of think, draw, share and discuss was used in the live class. This approach involved a period of time for students to reflect on a metaphor, draw an image, and then share the image live. A discussion of the images would take place and new ideas were explored and a sense of variety around the interpretation was observed. An example of a follow-up activity was to record a demonstration on how to draw a particular graphic that was already practiced in that live class. This method combined the use of technology with drawing skills. The elements that contributed to the success of the module were those social interactions, initially through the activities and then in the live class, the mix of staff across disciplines, the syllabus being presented through graphics, the lecturer and the instructional designer working closely together, participants becoming co-authors and learning how to use technology through its application the use of activities, informal live classes and humanizing activities, such as asking participants 
to create their own graphics for virtual backgrounds. Concept mapping and reflection through the use of an on online Miro board and continued conversations. In our final live class, we used a Myra board to create a persistent chat and collaborative space outside of Moodle and the live class. The Myra board really encapsulated the final reflections of the group and served as feedback for our further iterations of this module. This is a space that all participants can return to at any time and use for their own skills. Some participants' interest were was in improving the delivery of their content to their students and they weren't necessarily motivated by gaining a digital badge and participants now have the ability to seek out knowledge afterwards with a clearer understanding of the role of the instructional designer. We have just ran the second iteration of the module and have extended it to members of community-based organisations, ETBs, professional and academic staff from IT Sligo and the wider CUA. We firmly believe that the broader mix of participants adds value to the module. We are currently rolling out the course to IT Sligo students to further strengthen the lecture student relationship through the understanding of representation through graphics. Brilliant. Thank you very much. That, sound, that sounds fantastic, uh, Jennifer and Tamsin. I'm sorry, I pronounced your name improperly there. Tamsin, is it Tamsin? Yeah, Tamsin. Yeah. Tamsin, yeah, I always get this as Tate, so I'm used, to, <laughs> used to it. There's just, uh, there's two questions in there. I don't know, did you get a chance to have a look at them and maybe you'd like to address yes. them? Yeah, I saw that one from you, Bernie. So I think Jennifer, I think just after you typed it, Jennifer kind of answered that. So okay. we, didn't, we didn't use Camtasia, but yes, we have. Um, and I would use the... Um, Sometimes I get them to do Petra Kuchas or sometimes they do um, recordings and then embed them in Sway. So that's something that um, we do do. So um, I'm aware of Camtasia, but I, what we found actually in response to your second um, comment there is that from our reflexive conversations around this, I think Michelle and Jennifer found is sometimes what happened was limiting the amount of applications actually inspired more creativity so it kind of stopped that dispersal where people get um kind of over focused on trying out lots of different things and instead when we limited it to just a few it meant that they uh, responded much more creatively i don't know do you want to say more about that jennifer as well yeah exactly and also it helped with our response in terms of support so if we gauged what people were using and then we were able to come up with a, vi a help video immediately afterwards um, and that also inspired others to maybe use the same method um, we gave complete freedom to recording and digitalization of their work even though we did give them help videos on how to do it and we encourage them to use simple things like their own mobile phone and visualizers that are available in the college and also available to all staff to use for their teaching already. Brilliant, that sounds really good. I see Bernie has his hand up there, so yeah. we might take yeah. one question and then move on and, and leave space at the very end if people want to hang on. Brilliant, Bernie. Yeah, just real quick, um, the um, I'm, I'm, all, I'm all with you with regard to Sway and I'm with you with regard to keep them using just a simple thing. Just to say, it's a big discovery I've made. If the students use their phone to take pictures and they're told to, what to take the pictures of, something they sketch or an object that they're looking at or a short video, and the system behind the scenes has them upload that picture to a shared space, which is possible. They don't do anything except take a picture. The phone does everything else. That little app, that little app called um, Magisto that's linked to that hyperlink in Flickr is a sample of students' work. I mean, I just before they got back on the bus leaving Microsoft, the video clip was made. We did nothing except take the pictures. Mm -hmm. 